All right, what is up? Welcome back. I, I have made mistakes in the past. I've brought them before you, explain myself, try to seek some kind of uh, retribution, I guess, through public accounts. And this could also be kind of considered a mistake initially. It was late one night, many months ago, and I thought, hey, that looks like a cool camera. So I bought it. It is a Yashica 44 LM, or just Yashica 44, I guess. The idea behind this camera is kind of simple. It's a very, very small medium format camera. And I say medium format because, well, technically it is medium format. It's not the conventional 120 medium format. Check out my film photography explained video, but I kind of break down medium format as 120 film or 220 film. The spool size being six by something. 6x6, six 645, 6x7, 6x8, 6x9, you get the picture. This is not that. As you can tell, it's considerably smaller. This camera uses a different film stock called 127. And 127 film exists. It's, it's around, kind of. The reality, though, is that this, much like my beloved 110 format or 126 is probably a more apt comparison. They are film formats that, yes, there's still film out there for it, but labs are going to charge you a lot more to process it and scan it because it's a little bit different than the norm. And on top of that, the film also is a little bit more of a premium price. Exemplified here with the 127 film, which is, I've got it pulled up I just Googled it, but we're looking at $34.10 for Portrait 400 in 127. Gold 200 is 2726 and some black and white is 1799. Now those prices are all pulled from B&H. I'm sure that there might be more affordable examples out there, but still you're getting about uh, I think it's like 12 shots per roll at very steep prices. And by nature of the fact that this is a little bit bigger than 35 millimeter, but not as big as medium format. It's like a medium medium format film stock it's going to be not as good as quality as 120 but not but better than 35 if that makes sense the camera itself uh, came out in 1958 it was japan's first venture into the 4x4 era of photography which is basically just like i said smaller i'm not sure exactly what the market for this was but it, whatever market existed really died out in like the 60s and stuff. These cameras though are cool. Like it's a, this is a cool looking camera. There's just no denying that. It has like this glossy finish to it. This like blue gray with like the gray leatherette here. That's all stock. They designed them in different colors. My thought with that would be that this is, you know, very consumer centric. Like this could be like a fashion piece or something like that. And I got it, I'll admit, because I thought it was a 120 camera. I did not do my research, sue me. And then when I got it and found out that it wasn't what I thought it was, I was like, eh, maybe I'll still try to shoot 127. But then I was going to bed the other night, a few weeks ago, and I was like, I don't really think I want to do that. I was just thinking like, nah, I don't, it's just, I don't really feel motivated to do that. And like, yeah, maybe it'd be a cool video. Maybe it could be like, here's a guide to shoot 127, but, but I just don't really want to do that. <laughs> so I'm just going to not do that. Uh, I ended up selling this. I just sold this yesterday. So I'm going to get it packaged up and good to go. But I wanted to make a little video about it beforehand because I fell into this trap and I know somebody commented on one of my videos. I think it was the Yashica map video where I was like, get a Yashica map. They're great. And I'm like, what about a Yashica 44? And I was like, no, don't do that. I mean, you can if you want to, but I do think, you know, 
arm yourself with the knowledge that this, as cute as it is, is going to cost you more in the long run than the Ashika mat because 120 is just much more prolific, much more variety of film, uh, easier to shoot with, a lot more consistent, I would think. I just don't really, I don't know. I like shooting weird stuff, you may know that, but I, you gotta draw the line somewhere, and I think this is kind of where I draw the line at. So I wanted to make this video to talk about the things you kind of need to be on the lookout for in terms of film. You can see here, use 127 film only. I'm sure there's probably a way to try to cram 35 millimeter into here, blah, blah, blahs. I'm good, I'm good. I think this mixed with my, my recent Orwo and in Innoviz coat video is just me like <laughs> realizing <laughs> I'm trying to set very healthy boundaries here with what I what I do and don't want out of film photography. That's that's about it. Also, this is not even the best one because the original Yashica 44 has like the wine crank. I just prefer those so much more to the like the system here where it's like you got the side crank. I just don't like this. I really don't. And then the focus feels weird. Anyway, it, now I'm just kind of nitpicking, but this is a camera. It's a cute camera. It's just the juice ain't worth the squeeze. So if you're out um, looking for a film camera, a medium format camera, get a Yashica Mat EM, LM, get a Yashica Mat, Mat G124, whatever. Get a Rolly Cord, Rolly Flex, whatever. Don't get a baby Rolly Flex. Don't get a Yashica 44. You should be good. Unless you want to shoot 127, which if you do, there's nothing against that. It is going to cost a little bit more in the long run. And it's a little bit more gimmicky in my mind. Especially like 4x4 is an interesting size negative. But if you're going to post it online, there's really no notable difference between that and 6x6. Other than you telling people. It's just going to look like a square. A slightly smaller square but when you post it it's gonna look just like a square so anyway that's all I'm gonna go wrap this up I'll do some close-up shots of this and then I'll go package it up and get it out in the mail one more camera out of the hoard so cool bye